To introduce the survey, uh, we've just literally gone back to the sort of statistics of the participants, and really the survey is starting to be recognised, particularly in the last five years, by even uh, the big research houses like Gartner, as one of the most comprehensive surveys of its kind in the world now. We, we reach more places than most in terms of geographic spread, and as you can see, um, $140 billion of IT spend recognised by all the respondents. So I'm sure everybody added a little rounding up to their figure. So <laughs> maybe we've got a bit of an overestimation, but $140 billion of IT, that's plenty of computers and software. And then, of course, 14 years of data. Um, we've been running this for 14 years. So we really have a great mine of information. And the most interesting part of the surveys is really comparing them with the previous year. Now, for those of you that were here last year and in previous years, we've had a commentary about what big things are happening in the world. And we've always started with this particular slide, or a slide of a similar sentiment, which has said, you know, there's a new normal now, and whilst, and you can see from this slightly nuanced slide, there's a world recession, there's, there's fears about the economy, just look at the bottom and see that we've put some other thoughts and um, uh, things there which, which are slightly different. The key one being Apple's huge success, and also the flotation of, of, of Facebook, which has happened whilst we've been doing these CIO events. So we've had plenty of debates and uh, feedback on that one. Um, I can honestly say that um, we're not very sophisticated when it comes to um, answering the big Facebook question. Before they were listed, we actually got a relatively uh, good reading on whether people thought that it was overvalued. Yes, some did, some didn't. After they were listed, everybody, a majority of about 90%, seem to believe now Facebook is overvalued. I always remind people that it's not the end of the story. Facebook uh, is certainly not uh, going anywhere soon, and uh, it's not the end of the story. We just don't simply know. So, in this current climate, the new normal, we've got some tre tremendous paradoxes where we've got growth of the West Coast. The technology sector is a safe haven for, um, when compared with the retail sector, construction and others. Um, so, it's, it's, it, there's doom and gloom in the world, but what we're trying to do is bring out some of the positives in our own sector. Now, I'm going to go through some of the statistics with you shortly. Um, and I'm going to break it up into two or three sections, just little mini sections. And the first section is, are we back on a growth path? And so we've called it Return to Growth, and we've taken two particular questions and results um, to give us the evidence that it appears, certainly from the, the early, early findings, is that we're, we're, on, we're on a path that is at least in an upward direction. Now, the pessimists would say uh, less than 50% have, have growing budgets. Um, and so therefore, that's actually not a, a positive sign. But of course, we're coming from a tremendously low point of 25% in the midst of the recession growing budget. So we've, we've doubled, in effect. Um, the, the, the respondents have doubled in terms of their indication of growth. And this is even more important because IT really, like everything in the world, is getting you know, more for less. Value is important. Essentially, things are getting cheaper. Budgets are definitely, um, in, in, in some senses, you're getting much more for the same dollars you're spending or you should be. So for you to be growing your budgets means you are actually getting real return and real growth. So we're pleased with that result. And as we've seen with the first uh, question from Sonia this evening, over 60% of you feel the same tonight. Now, this is the second um, important bit, which says... There's been a shift in priorities. We've seen cost being the big driver uh, of priorities uh, in action. And when you, I'll go through my five big things very quickly, but when you see what the big changes are, and this is not necessarily the sort of the areas that occupy all of your time, but it's where the change in emphasis has, has shifted. And we've seen it going towards mobile, um, security and resilience. Interestingly, I'll remind you that two years ago, you told us that 93% of you around the world said that you didn't think security was an issue. And we said that that was one of our five big things. Uh, security, vulnerability, the sort of 
WikiLeaks moment we had, we all had, and now we've had a host of other evidence, culminating in this week's LinkedIn fiasco. We've had a host of evidence that security really is becoming an issue, and it should have been on everybody's minds at least two or three years ago. But we did get a very hard reading. We did say, though, that perhaps it was wishful thinking that 90% thought it was fine, and, and the other 10% were telling us the truth. But there you go. It's moving into, into, into a, a higher priority. And then, of course, it's no surprise that people are interested, businesses are interested in what we're doing in the social aspects. All boards are saying, well, what are we doing about social media? Boards read the newspapers just like we do, and they want to know what their companies are doing to get their brands out on Facebook. I'll give you a little story. I was in California three weeks ago, um, and I was meeting a whole host of interesting startups and mature tech companies, um, many of which you, you'll know. Um, one of the most fascinating uh, little meetings I had was with a startup who is doing the social media branding globally for Coke, Pepsi, Unilever, and others. And they are actually so fascinating in the sense that they've become the go-to person in California for making sure that the three big social media, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, are coordinated and branding can be somehow at least managed from a central position. And I could see a huge market opening up. It's obvious, I think, to everybody. But when I asked the CTO the question, what is your business development strategy? He said they didn't even have a business development strategy. The business was literally walking through the door. So there's no doubt that social media and consumer interaction is top. But it's also worth pointing out that actually some of these other ones are very, very important. Um, business analysis hasn't changed. It's still the highest, or one of the highest, of your priorities, and so is your architecture. I mean, architecture is so important. Simple things like, well, do you break out your internet as a backup? Do you, you know, how are you putting everything together so that it's robust when you have points of failure? We've had that problem with Harvey Nash in the last two weeks. Are we secure in terms of our backup? And, and how does the infrastructure protect the business and enable it to operate 24-7? Now, this is the other return to growth indicator. Okay, when CEOs stop worrying about costs as much as they do, and I believe they are still uh, focusing on costs, but the majority, by a slight margin, very, very small margin, are actually starting to focus on making money. So I'm going to leave that, um, that nice little statistic because making money is a lot more interesting than cutting costs. I've done both. I'm always, um, I'm, I, I, that's my responsibility as a CEO of a global organization, is to make efficiencies where I can and to continue to drive the top line. Looking for innovation on the top line, much more interesting. So we like that, that, that particular statistic, and we'll come back to it with the panel later on. Now, this is the shift in CEO priorities. So I think I, I really like this one because this gives you, it gives, really validates what we were saying before. And look, let's, let, let's, let's make no mistake here, saving costs is still very high on his or her agenda, right? 62%, slightly down, 4% down, 66 to 62. It's still the highest uh, priority for the CEO. However, the biggest shifts, once again, the underlying trends that are coming through are starting to happen in terms of generating top line. This one really resonated with all of our CIO events we've had. Everybody said, yes, everything's going to be done like yesterday. We recognize that imperative in the business. Mobile commerce, look, think about some of the stuff that's happening in online gaming. It's all immediate, it's all mobile, it's all interactive. It's when you're watching the event or whatever you, the odds are being offered on. It's the half time that's now becoming interesting in terms of what's going to happen in the next 30, 40 minutes or 45 minutes. Mobile commerce, payments by banks. Banks wanting us to register so that we can pay with our mobile phone. So there's a big shift in this area, M&A here, and once again social media comes up. Um, and we're not taking away the fact that actually 61% of you said um, stable IT performance is your highest priority. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's engineering, it's, it's, it's bricks and mortar, and making sure that, that, that everything works. And then there's these other things that are starting to um, rear their, 
come into the come into the frame. Now, green, just one little comment. Uh, green IT seems to have totally dropped off the agenda. Um, it's gone from ten to seven. Uh, I think actually that's pro that's predictable. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a great fan of, of, of efficiencies and of actually reducing um, our energy needs. And, and but, but I think that in terms of the prominence it was given, it was probably overplayed by particularly the vendor community. I remember being inundated, and I think that just we, we, we've been swamped with a world that's slightly different.